Hi guys, welcome to the fourth tutorial of the Web Dream Prefer Above tutorial series. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how do we navigate between different views inside an application. Um, we'll talk about what is inbound plug, what is outbound plugs, and um, I'll also talk about uh, different hook methods uh, that are available, and we'll explore uh, what is the call sequence that SAP follows. Uh, when it calls these hook methods. Right. Uh, let's look at the navigation part first. Now every view that you create in WebTime Pro will have inbound plugs and outbound plugs. Right. Inbound plugs are basically the entry points to the view. Outbound plugs are the exit points. Now you can have multiple inbound plugs and multiple outbound plugs uh, for a view. It's like you can have multiple you know, doors to a home. You can enter it you can enter from any door and you can exit from any door so you can have multiple of those plugs and uh, so I've created an inbound plug here with the name IB underscore view one and you can see there is an event handler that gets automatically created by the system so the system attaches handle in front of the plug name and event handlers are nothing but uh, methods that gets triggered when an event is raised by the system okay so um, then when you create an outbound plug similarly you can enter any name here in the description okay now similarly for the view 2 I've created uh, one inbound plug and one outbound plug now um, now before we write the code you know to navigate uh, between from one view to another view um, what we need to do is we need to basically create something called navigation links between the plugs right so I've embedded view 1 and view 2 inside window 1 now if you look at this um, so I want to navigate from view 1 to view 2 and then from view 2 uh, back to the view 1 how do I do that uh, so as I said uh, outbound plugs are the exit points and the inbound plugs are the entry points so if you want to leave from view 1 to view 2 I need to come out uh, I need to come out of outbound view outbound plug of the view 1 and enter inbound plug of view 2 right so what you need to do is you just click right click here and then say create navigation link you will get a pop up here you can select what is a view that you want to navigate to now I have to go I, I want to go to the view 2 so when I select view 2 automatically the inbound plug of the view 2 is selected here right so I've already done that and when you do that what you'll see is, is a funny you know, link uh, chain icon that comes here so which means this outbound plug of the view 1 is linked to the inbound plug of the view 2 similarly if you want to navigate from view 2 to the view 1 you need to exit from outbound plug of the view 2 and enter through inbound plug of the view 1 so I'll right click here and then say create navigation link and from view from view 2 I need to navigate to view 1 so I just select view 1 and then the inbound plug is automatically selected so when you do that this outbound plug is linked to the inbound for view 1 so this is basically kind of uh, you know what you do uh, in a window now how, do, how what I've done here is um, you know just added two buttons added one button in each of the view I've added button 1 in view 1 I've added button 2 uh, in view 2 okay so now um, when I created the button I've assigned an action handler there's a property called on action right events and you can enter any text here so inside action handlers uh, creates an action handler method uh, and this is the action handler method now don't worry about you know the code too much uh, so the idea for this tutorial is not to understand how to write the code to just understand what you need to do in order to uh, make the navigation happen inside the application so don't worry about the code I've written some bunch of code and uh, the code that uh, you know th that actually creates the navigation is this this line of code right so it's, uh, it's very simple uh, and uh, we can generate all this code by something called WebDemPro code wizard 
uh, which I'll talk about probably in my next tutorial more. Uh, basically, there is a tool to create uh, you know most of the code that you write in uh, Web Prime Pro. Yep, that's a very good news. So, and what here it says uh, the fire OB view one plug, which means it fires the outbound plug. Now, when you fire an outbound plug, what happens? System will go to the window one. Now, what it is firing, it is finding, uh, it is firing the outbound plug of the view one. Now, if you go back to the window one, what we have done here is we have linked inbound plug of the view two to the outbound view one. So, when that code gets executed, what the system does is it will see what are the uh, you know plugs that are linked to the outbound view outbound plug. Now here I've linked the inbound plug of the view two, so it'll go and call the view two. Okay, so it's it's very simple. Uh, and uh, similar thing happens when when I click a button in view two, right? Uh, if you go to the action handler of the button two, yeah, I go to the button two, and let's see what is the code written inside it. So it, it files outbound plug of the view two. Now, outbound plug of view two is connected to the inbound plug of the view one. Right. So the system calls inbound plug of view one, which in turn calls view one. Okay. So, so this is how the navigation happens. What you need to do is uh, you create inbound and outbound plugs, and you uh, create a navigation link inside the view, and then you write uh, using the code wizard you can generate a code to fire the different plugs inside uh, the inside the methods inside the action handler methods okay so that is for uh, how do we navigate between different views inside an application okay so let's see how it looks uh, in the web browser now i have a button with the text button 1 so if I click on button 1, I'm going to the second view in the button 2. And if I click on button 2, it comes back to button 1. Right. Okay. Now coming to the hook methods, as I mentioned in my previous videos, when you create an Webdemp Pro component, the system automatically generates some methods which starts with WD uh, Devo. These are called hook methods. Right. Now, um, now it, it's very uh, crucial to understand how the call sequence, how how the methods are called. It's very crucial to understand what is the sequence in which SAP calls these methods. Right. Now there are different different kinds of hook methods. Right. We have a component controller, we have view controller, we have window controller. Now all these controllers have hook methods. Uh, some of them. Uh, all these controllers have hook methods. Uh, for example, the component controller. If you go to the component controller, go to the methods tab. So these are all the hook methods. Like init, exit, and the before navigation, post processing. And similarly, the view controller has this me hook methods. The window controller has these methods. Now, if you see the WD init and WD exit are common to all the controllers, all the three controllers. Okay, so what I've done here is uh, you know, to just uh, understand the call sequence of these hook methods. I've written a piece of code inside every hook method to uh, display the messages in the web browser. So whenever uh, the system calls a method, it's going to display many message and say which method and which uh, controller, whether it's a view controller, or the window, or the component controller. That, uh, that the message comes from, right? So that uh, we'll know the sequence in which the methods uh, gets called. The methods uh, get called. Okay. Um, so I've written this kind of code in every hook method. It's part of component controller, review controller, or the window controller. Okay. I'm going to execute that in the browser and see what happens. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to refresh it. Lot of methods. <laughs> um, so we need to read from the bottom to top. Okay. So the first 
method it calls is the init method of the component controller and then it goes to the window calls the init method of the window from there it calls the init method of the view1 and then it goes to the handle default method of window1 so it goes back again to window and then it goes to the before navigation of method of component controller and then finally it calls modify method of the view1 and finally it calls post processing method of the component controller so there are a lot of methods uh, that are getting called when you first execute the application right? so irrespective of what you have in the view even if you don't have anything on the view all these methods get called by default right? now if I click on button 1 what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger an action handler of the button 1 let's see what happens Okay, so what happened? First, the system calls WD before action of the view one, and it calls the actual action handler related to the button one inside the view one that is on action button one, and then it calls after action method of the view one. Then it goes to the before navigation of the component controller. It goes to the init method of the view two because we are calling a uh, view two from view one, so it calls the init method of the view two and then it goes to the inbound handler of the view2 we'll create an inbound plug of the view2 so it goes to the inbound plug and then it calls modify method of the view2 and then finally it calls wd post processing of the component controller okay. now when I call back to view1 go back to view1 again but the difference the difference when we you know first first um, enter the application uh, we came to the view one and uh, by pressing the button one we came button two we came back to button one the difference between uh, you know th the method call sequence here and when we first time entered in the view one there's no wd init method in the sequence now right if you see if you go back if you refresh for example there is an init method right there is an init method there is an init method now if I go back to button 2 and button 1 all the init methods are gone so which means init method gets called when you enter the view first time after that it never gets called no matter what you do and the other thing to interesting to note here is the modify method modify method gets called every time we enter a view for example if I click button 2 now it goes to button 1 and we're calling modify method click button 1 we go to the view 2 and it's modify method so now this is interesting to know because um, when we do dynamic programming and right, when you want to generate the UI uh, UI of the view dynamically we write the code in modify method because it gets called whenever your view get called irrespective of whether it's a first time or you know you trigger the navigation by an action handler it doesn't matter whenever you view the request by the system uh, the system calls the WD modify method so that's why that's the reason why we write the dynamic uh, UI coding in modify method okay. um, so that's all uh, for this video thanks for watching uh, I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye